let's now discuss an important topic that relates to a company or services many of us use. Tech giant Google is facing a series of accusations of violating antitrust laws across countries, including India. Google faces fines and lawsuits in India, the European Union, the United States of America, Australia, South Korea, France, among several others. Now, the latest to escalate accusations against Google has been the European Union, which says that Google abused its dominant position in online advertising to undermine its competitors. But this is not the first legal case against Google. Regulators such as those in India say that Google's practice to pre-install all Google Suite apps on Android phones is anti-competitive. They say that Google is denying a fair market access to other competing apps because naturally, if you have Google Maps, Gmail and other Google apps pre-installed, you're unlikely to delete those and download other apps for the same purpose. You're unlikely to download another search engine in place of Google Chrome. There's another allegation. For that, let's first understand how, how Google really makes money. One of the biggest names in the tech industry, Google generates revenue essentially by means of online advertising. It does this by operating as a seller of digital ads on its platforms. For example, when you open Google Chrome or YouTube, you see ads for which these advertisers pay Google. As part of this advertising practice, Google offers its own set of tools to assist the advertising and it also has its ad exchange platform for buying and selling of ads. And this is where the problem begins. Regulators such as those in the EU have accused Google of displaying favoritism towards its own ad exchange, AdX. They say that Google informs AdX in advance of the ad value of the best bid from competitors, which ADX has to beat to win the auction. So that gives an advantage to AdX. Now to understand whether Google is seriously doing something wrong legally and what we should know as consumers of their service, we have experts joining us on the broadcast. We have Ankush Sabarwal, the founder and CEO of Corova, and he was associated with Google too. Um, uh, he's uh, with the AI-powered virtual assistant powered by Corova, and he's also associated with the Indian government's app with AI. We also have Pavan Duggal, an advocate in the Supreme Court who specializes in technology, and we also have have Jaspreet Bindra, the founder of Tech Whisperer Limited, and the ex-CEO of Mahindra, Microsoft, and the author of Tech Whisperer as well. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining us. And my first question to you, uh, Pavan Duggal. Is there something seriously wrong that uh, Google is doing legally? I think uh, Google has its commercial interests. As Mr. Duggal, yes. Mr. Pavan Dugal, uh, your audio is muted. If you could please unmute yourself. Please. All right, we'll come to Mr. Dugal in just a short while, but um, we can hear. Uh, uh, Mr. Dugal, if you can hear us. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, yeah, we can. I'm saying that Google has its commercial interests as its topmost priority. Hmm. And for that, it's willing to take the risk of facing litigations across the world. It knows that it wants to mint as much money as it possible and therefore wants to maximize its returns and therefore does not mind facing potential uh, actions, lawsuits, criminal complaints in different countries. Hmm. And the reason for this is very, very simple. They have a huge litigation budget and they would want to go ahead and fight these litigations for as long, long as they can. Hmm. And even if they get fined with huge volumes of money, that still is only peanuts as compared to the amounts of money that Google is able to generate hmm. by virtue of its predatory and competitive techniques and tactics. And this is the one particular issue that has been bothering uh, the regulators across the world. That's hmm. why there's a surge of legal action against uh, Google in a variety of countries in almost all the five continents. And the, therefore, the fact is, somewhere down the line, Google has realized that it's a power on its own self. It's hmm. a rule on its own self. And it does not mind are challenging the legal regime in different parts of the world. Somewhere right. on the line, Google have to realize that it will have to ensure compliance with applicable laws. Otherwise, it's going to cede its territory very soon. Hmm. 
Right. Interesting that you point that out. And uh, if I can come to you, Mr. Bindra, on that next, as Mr. Udugul pointed out, that Google has its commercial interest, as does any other company. They want to make profits. But legally, if we talk about the laws in the European Union, in India as well, is Google really violating those laws? Uh, is it really anti-competition and is it really favoring its own platforms over others? Priyanshi, I think uh, Mr. Dugal would be best placed to answer from a purely legal perspective since I'm not a legal hmm. expert. Hmm. But if I can draw back and look at it... But, from but a is technology. Google doing something different from other tech companies is what I would want to uh, ask you. Uh, that we, As Mr. Dugal pointed out, that it uh, cares about its profits, as do most companies. So is it something specifically different that Google is doing compared to other tech companies? Exactly what I was going to say. So look, absolutely right. Like any other market-listed uh, capitalist company, Google's focus is on rewarding its shareholders and therefore is much more worried about its revenues than anything else. The difference is that Google is in a position which no other tech company is. Mm. Google pretty much dominates, if I may say so, owns the internet. If you think about search, 90, 95 plus percent. Right. Think about video, YouTube, 95%. Think about uh, Android, 80%. In certain countries, 97, 98% mm. plus. Think about browser, Chrome, again, a similar uh, uh, kind of a number. Think about maps, same thing. Think about any large property that is there on the internet is pretty much dominated by, owned by, uh, overwhelmed by Google. And therefore, Google is in a position to use this power, some might say monopoly power, which other companies are not in a position to. And that is the major difference between Google and the other companies. Right. Um, and Mr. Ankur Sabarwal, if I can come to you as well, as we've pointed out that Google surely holds a major chunk of the market share. 90% of all the searches made globally are on Google. In fact, over 90% of them. So is it because Google is such a large company, it dominates the global market? That's why it's attracting these charges, uh, these accusations from major economies of the world, including the European Union and India. Or is it that from how you see it, um, the, the policy of let's say, pre-installing apps on mobile phones and of uh, being uh, uh, allegedly biased towards its own ad -X. Is that something that uh, fairly should invite such action? Or is it that uh, Google is the biggest company and that's why the authorities are uh, going after it? I think all of it, right? So it's a bigger company and regulators are keeping a watch. And I think that's good for the society and the ecosystem to keep a watch and alarm if anything is wrong. But I'll tell you, we are the users uh, as a company of uh, Google Ads. And uh, uh, we, we, we get to use the tools and uh, we are free to use AdX or not, right? So in, in fact, we can even define the priority, right? Which ad exchange to come first and which later. In fact, Google is even okay uh, to let other uh, ad exchanges to work without ad X, right? So mm. if you use the DFP, now the, the name is GAN, the Google Ad Manager, it's so, so flexible, right? You might not even use ad X and still mm. serve ads using Google tool. Mm. I've seen the report. I don't see any issues because I, I, I'm a user myself, right? Mm. So uh, it's it's very unbiased. It's, it, the, the complete control is given uh, to uh, to us uh, mm. as as publisher to decide what should be the hierarchy and in fact I'll tell you if it's about ad ad exchange and if there's a header bidding if you talk about Google comes in the in the last mm. so if if I have configured say ten ad exchanges right ten ad um, uh, suppliers mm. I can get the best rate and then I can compete with adx hey are you serving uh, mm. better than this or not, right? So right. The, I checked with Google in the end. The complete mm. control is, is with us. Uh, right. I really it, it, don't see right. any issues. That's interesting how you point that out. And that brings me to one of my last questions, Mr. Duggal. Um, we've discussed that Google is the dominant player in the tech industry. And uh, that's what the European Union also mentioned. So when you become that dominant in a market, that does give you that position to be able to abuse that dominant position is what the European Union is saying. And that does put you in a position uh, to, you know, have your own apps or pre-installed on Android devices. So is there something 
saying that Google is doing in violation of the existing laws in India, uh, in India particularly, and in other countries as well, uh, such as the European Union, Australia, that have imposed fines and lawsuits on Google, particularly the question being about India. Well, in India, Google uh, has to realize that it has to comply with the local laws. And the local laws in India, we have the Competition Act. Now, if you are going to do any activities which are in violation of the law, there will be investigations. And that's why a big uh, fine of $300,000, uh, a mm. uh, couple of uh, thousand crore rupees have been actually put in as uh, potential kind of fines to be given on Google. Now, Google has the remedy to go ahead and legally challenge that. But having said that, it is in a very unique kind of a position. Mm. While it, it provides its services at a global level, it must also ensure that it must comply with local laws. In the Indian context, Google has been found on various occasions in different uh, kind of cases to have uh, gone into that gray zone where it has potentially gone ahead and abused its dominance. Mm. And that's the reason why no other competition is able to stand up to the huge dominating power of uh, Google. It's this particular domination of one particular market player that but the, the legal framework is against because that goes completely contrary to free fair and free competition uh, as we go forward. So I think uh, there has been a huge number of uh, issues pertaining to Google's operations in India. A number of litigations are pending. It's been fined by the Competition Commission of India. It's still not paid. It's fine. It's gone ahead and taken approach to legal remedies. But by and large, you have to realize one thing. There is something substantially wrong in the conduct. That's the reason why regulators across the world, including regulators in India, have chosen to go ahead and fine Google. And fine is only a starting process. Should you not pay the fine, hmm. you're going to then become amenable to other legal consequences. So it's going to be a conflict hmm. of different ideologies. But ultimately, it will have to be seen that Google will have to ensure compliance with applicable laws so that the adequate competition hmm. and a competitive environment can right. be provided through the local industry and the right. local ecosystem at large. Right. I think that's ex an extremely important statement there that, that there must be something substantially wrong that so many countries are going after Google with lawsuits and fines while Google denies all of these allegations. Well, gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us on the broadcast. We'll, of course, wait to see how these lawsuits end up and how Google uh, justifies its behavior, its practices that are allegedly anti-competition and anti trust as well in several countries. With that, we'll take a short break, but let's talk business coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.